Hello lovely people. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. Oh, come and snuggle with me on this sofa for a few minutes. I've got to tell you, I am so looking forward to a sit down day. January has been bonkers so far. Um, not much by way of gardening because we're either having days which are uh, chocking with rain or they're freezing cold in the grounds, frozen solid. You know what, it's okay. It's January, <laughs> it's what we expect. If we were having this weather in May, I'd be getting quite fraught because that really would impact on my growing. But right now, pff, it's okay. There's nothing urgent um, needing doing in the garden. And as I am wont to say, there are plenty of things to do indoors. So yeah, because it's been a bit hectic, I'm going to have a proper just sitting down slow day today. Uh, I won't be doing nothing. <laughs> I'm incapable of doing nothing. I've got, you can't see me, I've got two massive boxes of cardboard that I've snaffled because there's some more covering uh, to do in the garden. So one of my little jobs later will be to take all the tape off. I always look at it and think, oh, quick job, <laughs> an hour later. That's the thing, isn't it? You think, you know, one of the jobs on the to-do list, it'll be a quickie. For example, at the end of the week, um, oh, by the way, <laughs> sorry, jumping around. Uh, last week we were talking about having our big sort it days, clean out, sort the drawer or the cupboard. You naughty people, so many of you have got either a drawer or a cupboard or that pile on the table. But I know after that video, a load of you said you're gonna get stuck in and get sorting. So I hope you've been able to get a load of that cleared. Uh, for me, when it comes to the, and I'm not showing off, I'm just saying it, when it comes to the going through the drawers and cupboards, pretty much get it done in a couple of hours because as I say, it's something I I do every New Year's. I kind of keep on top of it throughout the year anyway. And especially, sorry, excuse me, especially since stopping work, I just don't have stuff coming into the house anymore. So there's less to get rid of. And as each year goes by, I mean, this, this New Year's, I think there are a couple of books I've set aside for the charity shop. More on books shortly. But yeah, at the end of the week, um, there were still a few jobs outstanding which were kind of admin-y type things, including, I had a bill from HMRC. Um, that's our revenue and customs tax in the UK. And I thought, why am I getting this bill? I didn't earn, earn enough last year to pay tax. What's it about? So rather than shoving it to the back of a drawer or just sending a cheque and blah, hoping for the best, I thought I'm going to ring them, find out what this is. <sighs> Holy moly. I was on hold for over two hours. Insane making. Um, so I put my hand, my hands, I put my phone on hands free. So I was sitting at my desk so I could still do a little bit of work at the computer. Because otherwise, what a waste of time. Well, it wasn't a waste of time because I got it sorted. I know what that's about now. It's about NI contributions contributing towards my pension further down the line. So that's all good. But it's that point of, um, you know, you think... You look at your list and think, yeah, that's a list of jobs to do today. And even the first job on the list ends up taking pretty much the best part of the whole morning. Uh, so that list, it carries on into the next day and the next day and the next day, doesn't it? But I'm glad to say oh, that particular list, that kind of New Year's sort it, do it, that list now is done. Yay! Um... So it's time to crack on with other things. Now, the big thing today, oh, I've got all sorts to talk about and catch up with you on, but um, as you might, I can't remember when I first mentioned it, I've mentioned it a couple of times now, but leading up to Christmas, I stopped getting 
any mail whatsoever for, I think that initial period was the best part of three weeks. So when I came to you on Christmas Day and shared Christmas Day with you, what I didn't realise was I hadn't even had half of my Christmas delivered. And I think it was New, yeah, it was New Year's Eve, wasn't it? Because I did the quickie post bag with you all. New Year's Eve, I got an absolute mountain of mail. Yay! Then nothing again. And I've just had another little mountain, which I'll show you some of. Now, I understand, because there was, a, there was a news item about it, that there are 12 areas in the UK, apparently, who have not been getting mail. I'm one of them. Because of staff sickness. But it seems bonkers to me that if someone's off sick, the post office kind of go, oh, well, we'll just, we just won't even bother with their deliveries. Yeah, we'll just leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. The Christmas stuff, cards, letters, whatever, it doesn't matter when they arrive because they're a joy to receive anyway. I mean, it would have been nice, some of them, on Christmas Day, but uh, I've had bills, um, invoices for my great aunt and stuff around her that have just arrived, have literally just arrived in the last few days, around about the 12th of January, that are dated the 2nd of December. So one of my other jobs this week has been to hurriedly write a load of checks to get all that um, up to date because actually all her next bills are due anyway. Goodness knows when they'll turn up. That's reminded me, I must call the care management to explain about the post situation to say, they know that I pay you know, on time every single time with all her different bills. So I think I just call them to explain the post situation. Anyway, yeah, it's just kind of ticked me off a little bit. And I know, <clears throat> you know, it's difficult times, da, da, da. I accept that. But, you know, when I was a nurse, if another nurse called in sick, if another nurse was off sick for three weeks, we don't leave their patient <laughs> completely on their own for three weeks and say, yeah, sorry, your nurse is off sick someone else covers that patient. So I think with the post office, for example, I think it, I don't know, in my head, it would be relatively simple for whoever has the, the round, the next round over, is that they alternate days. So they do their normal round on Monday, my round Tuesday, normal round Wednesday, my round Thursday, normal round Friday, my round Saturday, if you see what I mean so that we don't get massively behind with our, our bills and like that thing with the tax, that's a, actually it's a, it's a demand for money. Um, and if I left it, if I don't get it paid by the end of the month, I would start to incur interest. Anyway, so yeah, oh, sorry, a bit of a, bit of a moan. Um, and like I said, with Christmas, my Christmas is just continuing and that's lovely, but with bills, yeah, I really could do with um, getting post maybe twice a week. I'm not asking for the moon, because <laughs> at the moment it is about, well, I've just had another lot. It's, I think it's about fortnightly. Anyway, so I've had a really lovely post bag. I want to share a few things with you and a few thank yous. Um, I've got a book that I'm going to review at the end. I've got some a food item I'm going to review for you, plus other bits and bobs. So let's get stuck into the post bag first of all. This is so lovely. This is from my friend Jackie over in Canada, and I did look at the postmark on the parcel. I can't remember what it was, but this is literally just turned up now. And my Christmas present to her came after Christmas as well. Posted the normal sort of time and plenty of time for Christmas. Never mind, the wait was worth it because I'm going to send this camera's focus spinning now, aren't I? Because I'm going to show you close up. Can you see that beautiful ceramic? You see the slight relief to it? A little sprig of lavender on a brooch. Isn't that special? Um. She picked this up last year at the big sort of flower growers show in, I think it's in Seattle in February. So 
where she is in Canada, she hops on the ferry and comes down to Seattle. So thank you, Jackie. I love it. That show probably isn't going to happen this year, is it? But now the thing is, I don't wear brooches on my clothes per se, but I've got a few special pins and brooches and I like to find something permanent to put them on. I think this is going to go on my mustard jacket. Gorgeous. Now what made me laugh, it made me laugh like a dream. It was wrapped in a paper bag, which was for something else that came all the way from Venice. So Venice, Canada, back to London. It's, uh, for us Brits, it's kind of ever so slightly rude. <laughs> it made me laugh my head off. In America, for you, it has a completely different meaning. But anyway, yeah, so it came in this paper bag. It's a glove maker from Venice called... <laughs> oh, I need to get some funny gloves. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that made me chortle so much. So I'm going to try and put this in a really polite way because I know we've got younger viewers watching. For those of you outside of the UK who don't know why this is a rude word, it's the word we use for a lady's middle bottom. <laughs> oh my goodness, that, oh uh, yeah. Stop it, Vivi. I've got to be a grown up, Vivi. No, don't be a grown up. Also, she sent me a lovely book called A Garden's Echo. I don't know anything about this. Oh, it's signed as well. So it's, it's absolutely beautifully illustrated throughout. Oh, it looks like an illustration for every, for every page. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So this is going to be, I think, I did it. A gorgeous book made to cherish. Through her warm voice and intimate images, the artist tells a story of a nearly forgotten past, of her China painting great grandmother, of two men, twin bankers, the sons of an important nursery man, of George Eastman's flower photography, and herself struggling on her farm. Oh, 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 it sounds gorgeous. It absolutely sounds it's a proper, proper curl up book on a wet grey day. Can you see me? It's so grey, isn't it? I've got, I've got my massive studio light on from the boys, hence my um, rather gothic shadow friend here. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much. Now on the subject of books, just before I go on to review this other one, I have had a couple more. Um, I haven't actually done any reading since I think the end of November. It might even have been middle of November. Just because December, I won't dwell on it. December was not a great month. Um, yeah, lots and lots going on. Lots of things pulling me in different directions and just no, uh, no time for me. So I haven't done any reading. Looking at what's on my shelves, I reckon I've got about three years worth of reading. So I'll show you the books in a second. Now I think I had a lovely card and note from Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. And in it, there were a couple of little bookmarks and it was, it, there's a note to say this gives the clue about a gift that's coming. So I think these books may be from Nikki. If they're not, please put your hand up and tell me that they're from you because I'd like to thank you. Um, the first one is called Carry On. And you can see, I don't know if you can make out that image, but basically, man, team of dogs. And it says, Stan Zure's journey from Boston greaser to Alaskan homesteader right up my street. Deadly cold, famine, grizzly bears, an unruly sled dog with a grudge who keeps his life on the knife's edge between survival and death. That's so my kind of reading. I think I know where to slot that into my current little pile next to the bed. So brilliant, thank you. Oh, photos, photos. I always love, in with non-fiction books, 
specifically let me see if I can find you a great photo to show you I love 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 oh look that he's tending to one of the dog's feet I love it when there's photos because it really helps you to sort of immerse yourself in that story and be able to picture it so I love maps as well um if there's a drawing of a map, I can think, ah, oh, okay, so that's how far they are from the nearest town. That's how far they are from the river if they need to canoe out or whatever it is. Brilliant. And the other one that arrived at the same time but different parcel, again, so it may be Nikki, I'm not sure. Oh, can't wait. This is also so up my street. I think I'm probably one of the easiest person in the world to buy books for because I have such eclectic interests. This one, The Diary of a Bookseller. Isn't that absolutely perfect for me? Oh, I can't wait. Oh, look! Cat. Actually, this cat looks very similar to the cat who habits my local bookshop. I was going to say who habits my local bookshop. The cat habits that little run of shop, so if I go into the ironmongers, sometimes the cat is in there. If I go into the bookshop, the cat's in there. Next door, my favourite charity shop, I go in there, the cat's in there. <laughs> Brilliant. So, if it's from you, Nikki, or whoever it's from, thank you. Two fantastic, right up my street books. Actually, and with Jackie's as well. So I've got a bookshop, a book selling book, a book about survival in... Alaska and a garden memoirs prose book. I'm such a lucky girl, aren't I? Um, also in the post bag, I'm just be, I had a really, really lovely, long, long. I always have to kind of maintain people's privacy and dignity, not show too much. Really lovely long letter from Laura. Um, Actually, Laura, you kind of made my eyes prick so many times in writing it. But Laura and her partner have started, well, a year or so ago had started to think, can we take the plunge? Can we move in a similar direction to Vivi? Can we give up work and live off the land? So... Laura, well done, well done for having the courage of your convictions to go for it. And, you know, this is the beginning of an amazing new chapter. It's not always going to be easy. Well, you know that already, don't you? But, um, but my goodness, when the rewards come, they feel so even greater for the sort of the struggles and the adversity and the down days you go through to get there. So... Oh, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Thank you. Um, almost <laughs> done with the post bag. Oh, and then, then I want to tell you about, a yeah, I've got loads to talk about. Blah, blah, blah. Chatty, chatty, chatty girl. So, um, my mum had said to me, I showed you a couple of bits I'd received from my mum for Christmas. And she said, did you not get your mm -mm parcel, other parcel? And I was like, no, that's all I've had. But So then... A couple of days ago, this, this big bunch of mail I've had in this last week, <laughs> my Christmas dinner has arrived. <laughs> it's only, what, two and a half weeks late. Bless her. My mum sent me um, a little uh, sort of ready-made nut roast. It's one that where you just sort of, you know, add water to it. Or I think you can add an egg if you're not vegan. Beat it up. And it's got a little baking tray in there as well, just... Pop the whole thing in the oven for a gorgeous, yummy nut roast. So, no, I'm not going to have this for my Christmas lunch. <laughs> but instead, what I will do is I'll just have a Sunday roast with it. Because I've got just a couple more carrots, a few more parsnips. Yeah, I think I can just about squeeze out a lovely Sunday roast. So, <laughs> thanks, Mum. I mean, you know, it's a good job this wasn't food that I was relying on, isn't it? Can you imagine, though, if I had been relying on that as food? Again, this was one that was postmarked something like the 2nd of December. It's taken six weeks to get to me. She'd have been quicker cycling with it down here. <laughs> Don't think my mum should cycle. Um, 
Ah, yes. So do you remember I had the lovely selection of honey products from my sister in the bee bag? One of them was the Seville Orange Marmalade with Honey. I don't know what that voice is. Um, it's wrong. It's just wrong. Now, I know that I'm... I'm funny with food combinations sometimes, you know, I'm that kind of like, don't don't put fruit on my mains plate, I say for Christmas lunch, like don't put cranberry, oh my light's gone out, are we too dark? I'll turn this one, carry on. Now I know how long the battery and the um, light lasts. Yeah, I, I'm kind of, I'll always try something, I'll always try it, but sometimes it's just, it's not for me. So this was just weird. It was just a weird taste because on the one hand you're expecting or I was expecting my orange marmalade taste and I could just about taste orange marmalade but then the honey was really strong. So in the end it tasted like I put on my toast, I put uh, you know, I'd slathered on a load of honey and then put marmalade on the top. It just, it was not a good combination, I've got to say. Now listen, I'm not going to waste it. I will, I will use it. You can see I've only had one serving. I will use it. And that's not me being ungrateful because I'm, I'm obviously I'm so grateful for all these lovely gifts. I'm just saying there is no way on God's good earth I'm ever going to buy that or do that combination again really really odd I don't know whether have we got enough light let's carry on there's a little bit of light coming in from outside I hope it will suffice and finally my last oh <coughs> wriggle wriggle um I think this is the last of Christmas now this is this is fantastic I have never seen it's a jigsaw. I've never seen a jigsaw like this. So this is from Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. She of <laughs> my, can you see, my chain mail <laughs> slipper booties. And I, I, she had let me know that there were a couple of parcels coming. One was squishy slippers and one was going to be a box. So yeah, another one that's really late, but Boy, oh boy, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to show you close because honestly, I've never seen anything quite like it. So it looks like a whole lot of portraits. Of, you know, there's lots of ties going on and shirts and some folded hands. Then as I bring it closer, do you see? It's all, they all have animal heads. Isn't that crazy? Bonkers. A fantastic. I love this little pooch here. And the title of the jigsaw is Be Kind to Every Kind. Isn't that just wonderful? Nancy, thank you so much. I love it. Am I going to wait till this Christmas, as in, in 11 and a half months' time? <clears throat> Because I've got those three jigsaws now. But of course, Christmas and the couple of days off I took for Christmas is long since gone. Hmm. Hmm. I've got a feeling I might at some point try to take some time out um, in which to enjoy them. I might try and have one of those kind of weeks where I'll work extra long, extra hard, Monday to Friday, so that I can free up my Saturday and Sunday. So just while we're on the subject of Christmas, because this is something else I didn't get around to talking to you all about. Do you remember with my with my treats money? I treated myself to the uh, not radio times, the whole fortnight of movies and TV and all that kind of special stuff that's on over Christmas. Um, in the end, <laughs> I watched two things. <laughs> that was it. Oh, honestly, I don't know where time goes. I fill it up. I have fun. Um, there we go. So I watched two things in the end. 
but they were both great. I thoroughly enjoyed both of them. One was, was it two things? Yes, it two things. One was um, the All Creatures Great and Small Christmas special. Oh, I'm such an old romantic. It was gorgeous. I, I, you know, it's such a gentle program anyway. It's got that lovely late 30, that, is it mid 30s? That whole lovely vintage vibe going on. All the frocks are gorgeous. All the sort of the animal care. It's just really lovely, gentle, old fashioned viewing. And I won't say too much in case any of you haven't seen it yet, but it's the episode in which Helen was due to get married to someone who's not James Harriet. Uh, yeah, so it was a bit of a tenterhooks one, but I loved it. And the other programme I watched was, um, what was the title? What's it called? Um, oh yes, The Misadventures of Ramesh Ranganathan. So he's one of my absolute favourite comedians. Incredibly dry, incredibly dry. Uh, and now these misadventures that he's done in the past, he's gone to different parts of the world, but parts of the world where you wouldn't perhaps normally think to go for either a holiday or as a tourist. So for instance, he's been to Albania, Ethiopia, Haiti. And it's really great to just sort of see these countries, get a little bit of insight and hear from the people there about what they want in terms of us going there and being tourists or whatever. But obviously with no travel, he couldn't go abroad. So this year, and I loved it, uh, he went, and I've just forgotten where he went, uh, Outer Hebrides, Inner Hebrides, he went to one of the Scottish islands. Was he on, it wasn't Sky. it wasn't somewhere as obvious as Sky. I've completely forgotten. Anyway, it was really beautiful, um, amazing sort of bleak but beautiful scenery. The guy who was his host, a cracking sense of humour. If you've seen Ron's misadventure series before and you like them and you thought, oh, I won't bother because it's, you know, it's in the UK. Like if you're UK based like me and you thought, well, I won't bother because it's the UK. Mm. Definitely give it a watch because it, yeah, it's got all the usual rom magic in it. And this is a thing about, we're in lockdown number three now. He's doing his live face ache, um, face ache, Facebook uh, live things. I don't know what you call them, live shows again. I think he's doing them Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at one o'clock. So if you're missing Rom, you can tune in on Facebook and have a bit of a catch up with him. Now, there's another tally thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, I'm so happy and excited. The Great Pottery Throwdown. It's back. Yay. I, I missed, I don't know how many series there have been, but I only tuned into it last year for the first time. Richard and Paul had mentioned it. And I was thinking, oh, you know, there's too much of this. You know, the Great British Bake Off. I'm bored of that now. Um, the Great British Sewing Bee. Not bored of that. I thought, oh, it's just, you know, oh, too much. I thought, I'll have a look at the first episode. Um, they're all available on Catch Up, so you can watch it on your computer. So I had a look at the first episode, and about 20 minutes in, I was hooked. Absolutely hooked. Now, this... For this new series, there's been a few changes, change of presenter, and I love the new presenter. She strikes me as someone who, she's kind of, she, she, she's, blah. she cares about, about everybody, but she's not soppy. She's quite, uh, she's daft. I feel like she, her sense of humour is always, always on the verge of coming out. Yeah, she's really jolly and fun and just, it struck, she struck me as being really down to earth. Obviously I don't know her, so I can't say whether she is or not, but, but the persona that comes through the screen is 
this down-to-earth, fun, cracking sense of humour, a bit naughty, uh, but definitely someone you'd like to be in your pottery studio with, or any studio for that matter. So yes, it's underway. I've only seen the first one so far. Have I got another one to catch up with? I can't remember. The lass who came first in week one, Sal, within five minutes, she was my favourite. She's got a scruffy, hairy dog called Charlie, just like my old Charlie. So of course I love her. But yeah, it's great to see that back and it's, it's that proper kind of winter telly to just completely escape with. We invest in the, in the personalities of all the different potters, don't we? They seem like a great bunch. And ultimately it's wonderful for me. I love, I love watching people going through their creative process and at the end producing something that might be magnificent, even by accident. And the whole jeopardy, oh my goodness, the jeopardy of carrying, carrying pots that haven't been fired yet down a staircase. Oh! So yeah, I'm delighted to see that back. Um, now, because I realise I've been waffling on for ages. Oh, are you sitting calm? I'm such a wriggly gertie. So, last time I talked about books, I was about to read this one. So if you remember, I'd read Mrs P's Journey, the, the, the A to Z lady, and I'd followed that with The Salt Path. Oh, and I know quite a few of you then got yourselves copies of The Salt Path and loved it too. And this is going to be my next read, because I thought that would be a good follow-on. Hmm. So after I'd finished reading it, I did make some notes because I thought I kind of realised how life was going and it's getting a bit chaotic. I might not read anything for a while, so therefore I might not review this for a while. Um, right, the Sunday Times on the cover says, a profoundly moving account of joy returning of one man's rediscovery of the world. So just to explain the premise of it again, in case you didn't see that last video, this is a guy, he, he has quite a serious illness, he's young, he goes to do his convalescence at his parents' house, I think he ends up being there for about six months or so. He picks up a copy of Paul Gallico's The Snow Goose. That sort of goes into his mind for a moment. Starts doing a bit of bird watching in the garden at home with his dad and his dad's really keen ornithologist. And William, our writer, comes up with this idea of flying over to America to Texas where the snow geese spend their winter, finding them there and then following them all the way up, right up to Baff Baffin Bay, is it? Let me just remind myself. Sorry, not Baffin Bay, Baffin Island, right up in the high territories of Canada, 3,000 3, miles. So it is a sort of travelogue, travelogue um, wherever he, he stops to either wait for the geese or catch up with the geese he meets different characters in those places you know chats in diners with other ornithologists and and it's really lovely and i think as a as a travelogue i really liked it i loved those characters he sort of brought in and shared with us it's interesting because he he flips quickly and easily between this sort of this travel travelogue narrative he's giving us and these gorgeous characters into suddenly in the next paragraph it will be very much science the science of ornithology um sort of um i made notes here what did i say or ornithology lessons and science so he goes into sort of like the physiology of the birds i feel like i learned so much and what's interesting is it didn't feel like it jarred. It all, it, it, it did change direction quite sharply. And we'd sort of be in that kind of science ornithology moment and then back again into the characters and the travel. 
but it didn't have a jar. It felt, it sat really comfortably. That was great. And I, I quite admired the fact that he was, he was able to do that. Taking the book as a whole, um, he, ha he makes these, it's almost like an impressionist painting, the way he sort of describes. There's sort of these very broad strokes and at once we can sort of feel the whole picture, either the, the whole landscape, the whole person that, that is his interlocutor, you know. But at the same time, he nails down these incredibly fine, fine, fine details. There's a, there's a, there's a moment at the, towards the beginning when he's describing a painting on the wall of the bedroom of the place where he's lodging at that time. His eye, firstly to see that kind of detail, but also to, to have the confidence as a writer to put it into the book, to just literally describe this painting. We, you might think, oh, doesn't that interrupt the narrative? Oh, no, it's absolutely exquisite. So we go from these great general broad strokes that sort of suck us in and drop us right into that landscape. And then shoo, this arrow-like precision takes us into a fine, fine detail so we can really sort of feel ourselves there. That's really, really beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. The, in terms of as on the cover that it says this sort of moving account of joy returning and his re rediscovery of the world, There's no, how to put it, there's no epiphanic moment. There's no moment of, I mean, it's rather like the salt path in that way that it grows. The, the, the book has such a clear goal in terms of his mission to, oh, sorry, I'm just noticed something on my screen there. His mission to follow the geese from where they overwinter in Texas to their summer breeding and feeding grounds up at Baffin Island. That's a very, very clear objective. What makes it, or what made it, it's really hard to explain, almost an odd book is he gets to Baffin Island, of course he does. There's no sense of closure. There's no sense of He's achieved that goal, so that makes something whole again, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel like it's changed anything. And in some ways it feels almost like a disappointment. It's like, now he's there, well, what next? I wanted the, I wanted the journey, literal and metaphorical, to continue. But it just sort of ends and throughout the whole the, throughout the whole book there's this sort of there's an underlying sort of melancholy nostalgia almost this kind of there's there's a sense of a deep deep yearning for something and as i read it i was feeling his deep yearning his nostalgia but it also triggered those feelings in me of my own yearnings and nostalgias. So I think that's why sort of at the end of the book, there we are, the geese are at Baffin Island, they're ready to breed for the summer. It was that sense of, oh, what now? <laughs> what now? I felt lost when I got to the end of the book. And that's not to, that's not to say it's a, bad book, I'm not saying it's a bad book, I'm not saying I didn't like the book, but it did leave me feeling oddly really empty for a few days. Isn't that odd? It's so odd. That's obviously, that's just my take on it. If you read it, you may have a completely different take. But yeah, there was that sense of, I think because it is a journey, a literal journey, those 3,000 miles, it feels all the time as we're going along on this journey with him that we're going to get somewhere. And it turns out we didn't get there because we don't have the answers.
we can't go in in making that journey it's not going to take us back in time to a different time and a different place i don't think i'm explaining it very well um yeah i thought i would say that for the most part i really really loved it but it felt to me like there was a chapter missing at the end yeah i kind of felt a little bit let down at the end a bit of an anticlimax a bit empty like i said but maybe you know what maybe it's a really clever thing maybe that last chapter that i feel is missing maybe that's for me to write up here maybe so yes there we go um no reading for quite some time or oh, every time i look over at my shelves i i just want to read everything all at once <laughs> I, I sort of have that talking of longing. My, this is the an idea of luxury for me if I was to win the lottery, which I won't because I don't play the lottery. But the idea of being able to take a month off life, off everything, off all my responsibilities, to be able to have a month off and read a book every day. Oh, oh gosh, imagine it that is luxury you can keep your super yachts you can keep your supercars you can keep your 20 bedroom mansions at sandbanks you can keep all that just give me a month off to read a book a day oh delicious right well oh ow. <laughs> that's not going to happen maybe there'll be time this afternoon for one chapter of something but I had I had a pile of books I know I'm digressing just quickly I had a pile of books all set out on my nightstand of what I was going to read next and now I'm like actually I want to chop and change it I'm, I might ditch that pile start again go back to the shelves maybe that's what I can do as one of my things this afternoon spend an hour at my shelves picking my next two or three books to read after I've done the cardboard after I've done some seed divvying etc oh there's plenty to be getting on with today, but it's all going to be quiet, sit down stuff because, yeah, no more running around today. The running around starts again tomorrow. All right, lovely people. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on the sofa again today. It's always a joy when you all cudge up here with me. I've got no idea what went on with the focusing today. I won't know till I edit with that light going out. But at least I now know how long that battery of the light lasts. I think it's going to be super duper useful for me. Stop digressing, Vivi. Cheerio, everyone. Please stay well. Look after yourselves. Have fun. Whatever you're doing indoors, if your weather is as inclement as mine is at the moment, whatever you get up to, do it with joy do it with fun, do it with humour and do it safely. Until next time lovelies, please look after yourselves and each other. Bye for now.